Being a millionaire no longer means having a chauffeur or riding polo ponies, but if you house shop wisely, you could still live in style. As recently as 2018, there were nearly 5 million Americans that could call themselves millionaires. Now that's a far cry from the days of John D. Rockefeller. And you're right, the median house price in San Francisco today is more than 1.6 million. The good news is, many places around the US, a million dollars is still enough to afford a mansion. Now we're not talking about a McMansion, we're talking about a pile fit for a real old timey millionaire. White columns, sweepy lawns, and maybe even a ballroom or a six car garage. So these are, Home listings for houses built between 1870 and 1940 with at least six bedrooms on the market for a million dollars or less. So these are nine of my favorite homes listed below. This Georgian style home which sits atop a hill on Grailson Road in Duluth was constructed for a family of a Minnesota lumber and mining executive in 1914. According to a Duluth publisher, for $999,000, the home's future buyers will get more than just history. This house has views of Lake Superior from its front porch and rooftop balcony. There are six bedrooms and five bathrooms inside this 7,232 square foot home. Its four floors also include a sunroom, recently remodeled kitchen, formal dining room, recreation room, and master suite. Outside the main house is an attached studio. This apartment can serve as an addition to the main house or separate residence for rental income and a large garage which has room for six cars. Now I'm not saying $999,000 isn't a lot, but this is a lot of house for that. This 1905 Tudor mansion is well known in the town of Lakewood. The seven bedroom, seven bathroom home has been called the Paul Sorge Mansion for its original owner. According to the village website and the historical marker database, no matter how you refer to it, the recently restored home has several undeniable historic features, like faces of character from the Canterbury Tales carved into the wood, according to the database. Constructed by architects Beck and Tinkham, the 7,300 square foot home comes with more than just literary references. The home's grand staircase is illuminated through leaded glass, while tin ceilings and several fireplaces accent the home's abundant woodwork throughout its three floors. Additionally, the home has the first floor master suite, commercial kitchen, sunroom, and two balconies. According to its listing, the home, which is on the market for $587,000, last sold for $325,000 in 2002. Most houses on the market don't have Yelp reviews. This 10,320 square foot house does, and the messages paint a glowing picture of the seaside home built by a ship captain in the 1800s. In quotes, grand home lovingly restored, a five-star review says the backyard goes all the way to the water. The 12 bedroom, 13 bathroom home, currently operating as a bed and breakfast, almost looks like a ship itself. Known as the Captain A.V. Nichols Inn, the home has hosted its fair share of vacations, weddings, and events in the coastal main city of Searsport. The sprawling mansion built in 1874 by Captain A.V. Nichols has waterfront views of the bay and beams and studs made from recycled ship timbers, according to the home's website. The house's listing photos show a Victorian era home with gables, widow's walk, and a private yard and deck on the water. Like a lot of houses in this series, it could use some work but it doesn't seem like that bad of a price. The home is on the market for $875,000. This 6,416 square foot mansion was built in 1892 in Pierre, Illinois, a town three and a half hours southwest of Chicago, or at least most of it was. The exception is the home's fireplace, a hand cut Italian marble relic adorned with carvings of flowers, leaves, and fruits. The fireplace was originally one of at least 42 inside Chicago's storied Potter Palmer mansion, according to the home's real estate listing. The home has views of the Illinois River both from its master suite and rooftop deck, which comes with a hot tub. Other notable features include a sunroom with heated floors, an office, and a balcony with iron railings. Not to mention that this house is also sitting on a pretty nice chunk of land. The home is on the market for $895,000. So not saying it's the cheapest thing in the world, but for what you're getting with the tons of square footage, 10 plus acres of land and incredible views, if this house is for you, it doesn't seem like that crazy of a price.
So although very similar to the first house I showed, this is actually a different home and in the same town as the first one. A mansion turned into a bed and breakfast in Duluth will cost you just under a million dollars. As high as that price tag is, it's a bargain compared to its original construction cost. The elegant brick home known as the Olcott House was built in 1904 at the cost of $140,000. According to the home's website, that's equivalent of about $3.76 million today according to an online currency calculator. The future buyers of this Georgian colonial mansion will have plenty of room. At 8,618 square feet, the home has nine bedrooms, six of which are suites, and 10 bathrooms, as well as a music room, library, and chef's kitchen. Historic details are present throughout the historic home, from ceiling beams and ornate fireplaces in the home's common space to what the listing calls a huge lower ballroom. The rooms in the home, which were featured on HDTV's If Wall could talk in 2002 currently cost between $165 and $225 to rent per night, according to TripAdvisor. This home is on the market for $999,000 and could be yours for quite possibly even less. With a two-story front porch, multiple chimneys, and a stately facade, this Virginia mansion mixes modern updates with its 1938 roots. Outside a basketball hoop, stone patio, and what the listing calls a 23-foot breezeway add to the brick home's herb appeal. Inside, six bedrooms, some of which have fireplaces inside, and five bathrooms populate the 5,500-square-foot home. Other rooms inside the two-story home include a 22-foot long formal dining room, a playroom, and even a living room with a floor-to-ceiling window, according to the listing for the home. This house comes fully furnished with brand new updates. You're not gonna have to put in a ton of work to this place, and it even has proper landscaping around the whole property. So feel free to even kick back outside around your fire pits or even on your back patio. Not to mention the massive three car garage it has. This home is now on the market for $798,000 and even sits on almost two and a half acres of land. Rear Admiral William Mayhew Folger, a Navy officer who served in the Civil War, built the 6,000 square foot home with beams and planks milled on site in 1900. More than 100 years after construction, the home has its turn of the century charm. The six bedroom, five bathroom home has many of its period details in place. From beam ceilings to ornate staircases, the three story home sits atop 34 and a half acres of land that includes gardens, gazebos, and trails to a nearby brook. So about 10 acres of this land is open and the remaining 24 and a half acres are fully wooded for all the privacy in the world. Not to mention that it offers a pond that's over 100 yards long with its own hangout area. This house offers all the activity in the world while also not having to do many updates. This house comes fully furnished and appliances have all been upgraded throughout the years. This home is on the market for a million dollars. Beyond the gated entrance to the private Pershing Place in St. Louis Central West End is a home with leaded glass windows depicting flowers, graceful turnstairs, a music room, and a library asking for $960,000. The six bedroom, six bathroom, all brick house was designed by St. Louis architect Francis Drischler. It sits atop a 9,148 square foot lot spanning 5,400 square foot. The home is full of historic details from a claw foot tub to a brick and iron front gate. Another plus, the 1907 structure was renovated earlier this year according to its listing. 
So although a vertical style home, this place still has all the space you need. Not to mention massive dining rooms, a big kitchen, and it even has a really nice cleared backyard that sits on just about an acre. Which technically, according to the article, is subdividable, meaning that you could actually build another building on the property and use it to rent out to tenants or even just sell it for a profit. And just to remind you guys, because I stated it in the beginning, this home is on the market for $960,000. The 1920s Tudor for sale on Asylum Ave sits among a row of equally grand houses on the edge of West Hartford's Elizabeth Park. A circular driveway, plentiful landscaping, and even a koi pond sit outside the home, which was built with an entertaining mind. The 4,375 square foot home was built in the 1920s, and it comes with six bedrooms and five bathrooms. It also includes a sunroom, an elevator, finished basement, and an office according to all the listing photos. This house sits on a little over two acres and is on the market for $799,000. All right, everyone, I think that's gonna wrap this video up. Like I mentioned in the beginning, follow all my social media, and also 50% of the people who watch me don't subscribe. So just, if you're watching, just click the subscribe button. It's free, it means a lot. And then an alternative option would be to become a member, which costs a couple dollars, but then, you know, I'll be calling you guys, FaceTiming you guys. You get cool badges, you get exclusive videos. Um, I'll be making videos that I can't show, like public channel. So you guys get a ton of cool features and by clicking here and becoming a member. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I love you guys. Thank you for the constant support. Feel free to share this video on anything, and I'll see you in the next video. Later.